So welcome back friends. I finally finished up the, uh, the adventure van galley cabinet uh, and it really turned out great. I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I wanted, I didn't video it. I got kind of got in the, in the zone there and uh, uh, just had to get it done. But uh, I'll bring you up here close, show you all the features. There's a lot of details to it. Uh, this uh, is essentially a little mini kitchen, a kitchenette uh, for the uh, transit van. So um, let's come in close. So this is really my first attempt at, at cabinet building. And I guess the thing that surprised me of just, oh, how much work goes into it. It really is something, uh, uh, there's so much figuring and trying to work things out so there's no conflict. There's so much to pack into su such a little tiny package. So as you saw from the previous video, of course we have the, uh, the cutting board. Several of you pointed out the fact that this is not food grade safe. That, that's a good point. Uh, we won't cut directly on it, it's just a countertop. Uh, Mrs. W will have a cutting board on top of this, so I'm not too worried about that. I did add a, a little uh, ledge here, right there, so uh, drawer face, and we'll put a little puller on there, uh, so that will come out and dub basically double the, cap the cabinet uh, size. So inside, this was one of the first uh, drawers that I built. I built a, uh, it's got a large drawer here, and the, the tricky part was uh, I decided I am going to go ahead and put a sink in here and I found a tiny little, it's a little stainless steel bar sink uh, that will, uh, it's about 14 inches by 8 and 3 quarters inches that will fit right here. I'm going to have to cut, uh, I'll have to put a stopper, I'll have to take about an inch and a half off of this or so, but it'll fit right here. And so I left enough room for the drain to go out and then a race in the back uh, for that. So that will sit, there'll be a nice little stainless steel uh, sink right here uh, that shouldn't be, it should have plenty, plenty of room. Uh, let me bring you over to the front and show you the drawer. So on the front is the drawer and I changed up my plans kind of in the middle of the build. I was gonna put the refrigerator on top and the drawer on the bottom and I decided it'd be, it would be more convenient to have the drawer up top and have the refrigerator on the bottom so that the door will swing out underneath the bed. So this is a temporary drawer face, just a kind of a representation here. I built the, this is one of the first drawers that I built, a full extension drawer. It's very large so it, you can put lots of stuff in it and if, with a soft close. Really turned out, really turned out great. Uh, one mistake I made is when I cut the original hole in the drawer face when I built the drawer uh, was I forgot to account for the, uh, the rails, the sliders here. So I had to, so that made my drawer face too small. So I'll have to build another one. But uh, that is just fabulous. So here's a little different angle. Uh, I used three quarter inch plywood. Yeah, it's probably a little bit heavy, but uh, I was, I did it for the convenience of my pocket, using my pocket screws. I put a quarter inch uh, bottom in it. That's all, um, what do you call, rabbited in, or I would never get the terms right, but uh, a good heavy, really heavy ball bearing uh, slides that do the soft close, so it won't rattle out on us, but that's gonna be really wonderful. You can put a lot of stuff in that little, little drawer there. On the front panel, I added a, uh, a remodeled box there that this will be a 110 outlet uh, for the, that'll come off the inverter that will be wired in there. So uh, we can plug in our InstaHot, we can plug in the, um, you know, the whatever, whatever she needs to do. To do. Um, I'm thinking about for a cooktop doing an induction, a uh, little induction. I don't know if I, have, if I have enough battery. I've got 200 amp hour lithium. I'll have to try it and see. We may have to add a second battery, but we'll, we'll, we'll try it out and see. Uh, this here uh, turned out really good. So this is a, uh, just a really deep cubby. It's two feet deep. Um, I, put a, I put a divider. It's 12 inches and 12 inches, a, a little shelf there in the center that's removable. So we can pop that out if, um, if she doesn't want that or move it around. Uh, but with the sides on it, it's going to prevent things from, from you know, bouncing out. We might have to put a lip on here. We'll just have to see. It's, uh, it, it is a prototype. And then, of course, the opening for the refrigerator, uh, which will go in there with a, it is a, a right-hand swing. So it'll swing out underneath the bed. But uh, so far, so good. I, you know, my original plan for finishing this is using a, um, a Formica. Um, I like the Formica because it, it looks really clean and it's durable. I've never done it before, so it, it's going to be a bit of a learn, learning curve on that. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully that's not that tricky. I don't think it is. Uh, I've, I've been around it. I remember watching my dad do it, but I, just, I don't think I've done it personally. But the other, the other thing is, is that I, I was really careful with everything and the way I hid the screws. If I wanted to, we could put a natural finish on it, like a, a gray stain or a, a natural stain. We could do water locks or a polyurethane, something like that, that uh, might look okay. I'm not a super fan of the yellow, uh, the color of this. Um, this is the Home Depot veneered plywood. It's, it's okay. 
um, but um, I think it almost need a stain. So let me know what you think. Do you think we should do Formica or should we do a natural wood stain? Um, I can't, I'm really, I can't decide on that. Uh, for the drawer faces, of course, you know, I'll probably just go with this, something like this. Um, I just, I'm not sure. The, what, the reason why I cut this oval in here instead of a square is, of course, the edges of the plywood are kind of unsightly. They, they don't look that great. Um, and one way I, that I see a lot of van manufacturers or upfitters do is they'll cut these ovals and then there's a really nice looking black, black rubber vinyl trim that kind of sandwiches this over here and, and finishes it really nice. And if you do a 90 degree corner, you can't really make that bend. It looks kind of silly. So I think that's the reason why they do the oval because you can do it here and do a nice tidy little seam on the bottom. Same thing goes for the drawer face, you know, and I might do that as well. I might do around the corners, do an oval drawer face, cut a kerf in it and use that exact same vinyl. If I do a Formica face, I think I'll do that. And I like the oval over the square because it kind of looks like, I don't know, it kind of looks like RV-ish or it looks a little bit more marine or, or airplanes kind of style having the, the round edges on there. And I think that's the reason why they do that. But uh, all in all, there's a ton of storage in this little cabinet. And on the left side, I put uh, a face on the, on the pull-out countertop. So that's gonna do a couple things. It finish, it'll finish off the hole uh, that we have here. I tried to cut it as neatly as possible. You know, I, had to, I had to do all of this stuff with a, by hand with a skill saw. So I took great pains and precautions to have clean square edges in the case that it, you know, cause it's gonna be kind of exposed. So it was the best I could do uh, with the tools that I had. But the, that finishes it up nice. Of course, it's, it's soft close there. Um, and I think that would look good against the Formica, having a little bit of a wood accent, it's no problem. We'll put some sort of a low profile uh, pole on there uh, so we can get a hold of that. Uh, but that, uh, that turned out re really good. And the, also having the lip is gonna prevent things from being pushed or slid off the edge uh, onto the bed if it was you know liquid or something to that effect. So for the most part, it, it is complete apart from the finishes, uh, the Formica or the stain. Uh, one thing that I overlooked that you guys pointed out to me and I'm really appreciative of is I talked about uh, the refrigerator doing, uh, wrapping it in a um, insulation, insulation to, to, so it was more efficient and to take, uh, quiet it down a little bit. Uh, but you guys pointed out to me that that, that uh, refrigerator needs to have a pretty good, has, needs to have airflow, a ventilation, uh, or it can overheat, and I've even, I've even seen some of those Norcolds uh, have caught on fire before, and I don't know if, if it's for a lack of ventilation or what it is. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to uh, cut in a vent. And I had one, I had a really good looking vent screen, and I can't find it anywhere, so what I'll, what I'll probably do is on the refrigerator side here, I'm gonna cut in a very good size a grate, uh, something that's, that will look nice on there. Uh, up high as I can. And so as the heat builds up in the box from the refrigerator compressor, uh, that hot air is gonna come out um, and vent. And it only makes sense. So I appreciate you guys that pointed that out to me because that would have been a, could have been a catastrophic mistake by insulating that thing and sealing it all up tight. That was not the, uh, not the thing to do. So uh, yeah, just a couple little details. Uh, and then what I think I'm gonna do is I'll install it. I'll, I'll show you, actually I already did. <laughs> You'll notice that in the video, the next clip, this, this isn't in here because I, I shot, I had it installed to show Mrs. W yesterday. Um, and then I brought it back out and I'm like, oh, I forgot to add a, a box to that. Uh, so that's why that is. But if there's anything you guys can think of that, I, uh, that would be handy that I could add to this uh, with the limited space that I have, um, let me know. I mean, it's, it's uh, we have a countertop here. We got that there. There's gonna be that, the uh, stainless steel sink cut in there with hot and cold water. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So it's been a good project. I, I, lear I learned a lot. Um, cabinetry, ca building cabinets is, um, it's, it's tough. It's tough, especially in confined spaces. And you know, you just can't hardly really buy something like this. There's a couple companies that make kind of ready to go cabinets for RVs and they're obscenely expensive. And they're not, they're not the best construction. One of them quotes that I got was, like $2,400 and I don't even think it had a pull outside. I mean, it's just ridiculous, it's ridiculous. And you can't really modify existing things because they're, they're really not 
it, it just, you have to build your own, it, it, you know, according to your wants and desires. It's just not really any other options. There's just nothing off the shelf that I'm aware of um, that can be uh, as tailored uh, to, to your needs as building your own. So uh, don't be intimidated to do it. Um, I used uh, one sheet of plywood, three quarter. I used um, a couple one by fours. I think the most important tool was the, the pocket screw jig. That was the best $35 I've ever spent. It, it changed everything. I'm, I'm not going, I'm gonna build a lot more cabinets and things that I was a little bit intimidated to do because I didn't really know how to do it because that makes things so easy. It's a, a one amazing tool. It's one of the best tools that's come across my shop in 10, 15 years. And I'll be honest, honest about that. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Wood versus Formica. Wood natural stain versus Formica. And any additional things that I can add before we wrap it up. So hope you enjoyed the video. Have a happy Independence Day. And uh, we'll cut to the clip and I'll show you the cap that installed inside. Um, so yeah, very happy with it. Um, we'll hook it up. We'll have cold drinks for our 4th of July party as we, uh, we get, we're going to be uh, doing our river drift here today. It's 4th of July. Or Independence Day. Sorry, I got in trouble for using the day 4th of July. Independence Day is more appropriate on the 4th of July. Uh, but very good. I had, a, as far as work goes, I had a, you know, maybe a day and a half into it. A lot of that time is head scratching and thinking about stuff and measuring it, but um, fits very good. I've got room here between the bed. These seats do recline a little bit. And I didn't want to lose that function because it just, you know, being able to change position on long trips is really nice. So that there's room for that there. And all in all, I think it, uh, it's a, it's a success.